Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to discuss about lens related glaucoma. First, let us discuss about phacolytic glaucoma. It is a secondary open angle glaucoma. It usually occurs due to hypermature cataract. In this case, there is trabecular obstruction due to high molecular weight lens proteins that leak through intact capsule into aqueous humor. In phacolytic glaucoma, macrophages containing lens proteins can be seen in the angle as you can see in this picture. Coming to another entity that is phacogenic glaucoma or phacoanaphylactic UA it is. In this case, it is an autoimmune granulomatous reaction to exposed lens proteins. Remember, in phacoanaphylactic UA it is, there is compromised lens capsule that is the lens capsule is breached. Whereas in phacolytic glaucoma, the lens capsule is not breached. Coming to the symptoms of phacolytic glaucoma, the patient presents with pain and poor vision usually due to cataract. On examination, we can see corneal edema, hypermature cataract, deep anterior chamber. There will also be large floating white particles in anterior chamber as you can see in this picture. These white particles are composed of lens proteins and protein containing macrophages. These large floating white particles can give a milky appearance to aqueous if they are very dense. Also, there can sometimes be formation of pseudo hypophyon in cases of phacolytic glaucoma as you can see in this picture. Coming to gonioscopy, it will demonstrate open angle with lens derived material and inflammatory cells usually in the inferior quadrant. Remember, gonioscopy will be tough because the view won't be adequate. Coming to the treatment of phacolytic glaucoma, first we have to control the intraocular pressure medically, then we have to take the patient up for surgery. During surgery, the proteinaceous material is washed out from the anterior chamber and then the cataract is removed. Care should be taken not to rupture the zonules because the zonule in case of phacolytic glaucoma is fragile. This picture shows a complicated phacolytic glaucoma cataract surgery. As you can see, there is retained white particles due to inadequate irrigation and aspiration. Coming to phacomorphic glaucoma, it is acute secondary angle closure glaucoma which occurs due to intubation cataractus lens. Equatorial age related growth of lens slackens the suspensory ligament and allows lens to move anteriorly. The associated anteroposterior growth leads to increased iridal lenticular contact and potentiates pupillary block and iris bombay. This is the pathogenesis of phacomorphic glaucoma. Coming to the presentation of phacomorphic glaucoma, the, uh, the clinical features are similar to acute primary angle closure glaucoma. The patient presents with shallow anterior chamber and mid dilated pupil. There will be dense white cataract and corneal edema as you can see in this picture. It is more likely to occur in eyes with a shorter axial length and shallower anterior chamber. Coming to the investigations done for a case of phacomorphic glaucoma, we can do anterior segment OCT or ultrasound biomicroscopy to diagnose phacomorphic glaucoma. Coming to the treatment of phacomorphic glaucoma, medical treatment is initially similar to that of acute primary angle pressure glaucoma. We have to control the intraocular pressure. Myotics are omitted as they tend to increase iris lens opposition and shift lens anteriorly. We can give systemic hyperosmotic agents. Laser iridotomy can be done. However, it is difficult in the affected eye due to corneal edema or lens cornea proximity. Laser iridotomy can be done prophylactically in the fellow eye. Laser iridoplasty can be done as a temporizing measure. The definitive treatment is cataract extraction. This should be done once IOP has been normalized and the eye is squared. Remember, cataract surgery in phacomorphic glaucoma can be difficult and it carries a higher risk of complications. Coming to pupillary block from disruption of lens position, the causes include blunt ocular trauma. In this case, even a trivial trauma can cause lens dislocation in eyes with a weak zonule as in pseudo exploration and homocystinuria. This can also occur when there is congenitally small lens that is microspherophakia. Examples include wheel marchesani syndrome. Coming to the pathogenesis, there can be dislocation of the lens into the anterior chamber. The zonules may be stretched or only part of attachments may be disrupted so that intact part acts as hinge and lens may remain fully or partially in the posterior chamber. There can be associated vitreous herniation also. Coming to the diagnosis, the lens fully or partially is dislocated into the anterior chamber as you can see in this picture. 
This can cause acute pupillary block, which will lead to sudden severe elevation of intraocular pressure with associated visual impairment. Ultrasound biomicroscopy can be done to diagnose such cases. Coming to the initial treatment, we should do intraocular pressure reduction with osmotic agents. Remember, such cases should be treated on emergency basis because prolonged lenticular corneal contact can cause permanent endothelial damage. Initial treatment consists of supine posture with pupil dilated. This may reposition lens into the posterior chamber following which a meiotic can be put. Bilateral laser hydrodotomy can also be done as initial treatment. The definitive treatment however is surgical lens extraction. After lens extraction, we can place anterior chamber intraocular lens, iris or sclera fixated intraocular lens. Thank you.